Okay, so I wanted to talk to you about this phrase, differentiating with respect to, because it doesn't really get addressed in the book, and it's something that I wanted to teach explicitly. So up until now, we've mostly had Y in terms of X, and I, you'll have heard me saying we differentiate with respect to X. So what I've got here, I'm going to just do this as an example. When you differentiate with respect to X, what you're actually doing is you are differentiating with respect to X on both sides of the equation like this. You are doing D by DX. Now, when you do that to the left hand side, Y, when you differentiate Y with respect to X, you apply that D by DX function. The definition is it just becomes DY by DX. OK. When you do it to the right hand side, when you do d by dx to 3x to the power of 4 minus 12x squared, that is where the 3x to the power of 4 is just going to become your 12x cubed, and your 12x squared is going to become your minus 24x. So what you're actually doing when you're doing this differentiation, you don't just start off by writing dy by dx, you are applying a d by dx function, which makes y become dy by dx, 3x to the power of 4 become this and minus 12x squared becoming this. So the dy by dx part that we've got here is meaning the rate at which y changes with respect to x. And if you think about it, this is really what the gradient is. When you're looking at a graph, you're saying how is the y coordinate changing here and here as you move across the graph in the x direction, the rate at which y is changing with respect to x. But we can also differentiate with respect to other variables if needed, and not just x. And this is going to come up loads and loads and loads in all sorts of areas of maths with calculus in now and differentiation. So for example, I've got this formula here that says c equals 3t to the power of 4 minus 12t squared. So this might be something about like the cost of something being a formula in terms of t, which might be temperature or time. And if I wanted to differentiate this, I couldn't differentiate both of these sides here with respect to x. The variable that I would be differentiating with respect to is the one that it's a function in terms of. I would be differentiating it with respect to t. And so the right hand side is going to be pretty easy because you're just going to do the same process of what we've got up here. Apart from instead of concentrating on x, we're concentrating on t. So it will become 12t cubed minus 24t. And then just think to yourself, well, if y, when you differentiate it with respect to x, becomes dy by dx, if you differentiate c with respect to t, it's going to become dc dt. And what dc dt actually means here is it means the rate at which c changes with respect to t. So it might be how does the cost change with respect to time in that particular formula. And so for this one I've got here, I have r equals 3 theta to the power of 4 minus 12 theta squared. So maybe r is going to represent the radius or the length of a line, and theta might represent some kind of angle. Well, this time I'm going to be differentiating it with respect to theta. I'm going to be doing d by d theta. Well, r is going to become dr by d theta. And this is the same expression as before, so I'm going to get 12 theta cubed minus 24 theta when differentiated with respect to theta. So dr by d theta means the rate at which r changes with respect to theta. So we're no longer talking about gradients here, we're just talking about how variables are changing with respect to other ones. And maybe think about what these variables could be representing. I've got v and I've got h. So I think we're going to be probably suggesting that V is some kind of volume and H is maybe some kind of height of a particular shape that we might be measuring. Well, this time, the variable I'm going to differentiate with respect to is DH. So I'm going to do D by DH. The V is going to become DV by DH. And again, we're still going to get our 12H cubed minus 24H. So dv by dh means the rate at which v changes with respect to h. So when we say differentiating with respect to x, it's because we're doing it with respect to x, and you always have the, the thing it's with respect to ends up on the bottom. OK, now you don't need to, if you don't want to, you don't need to include all these bits here that I've done in red. 
Okay, you can just differentiate with respect to whatever you want to do. But I'm going to leave these in because I think it's useful for you to think about what is going on. So we're going to play a little bit more with this language of rate, and then we're going to apply it to some problem solving to see what differentiation can actually be used for. So here I've got three scenarios that are worded, and I want to be able to change this from worded into this D by D something kind of notation. So the first one says that a container fills at a rate of 20 centimetres cubed per second. How could we use appropriate notation to represent this? So first of all, as soon as you see rate, we know it's going to be D something by D something else. And here we've got a clue because we've got centimetres cubed per, per sometimes means like a divide line, and then we've got second. So let's try and put this all together. We know it's going to be a D something by D something else. And I think that the 20 centimetres cubed is a measure of volume. And I think seconds are a measure of time. So it's going to be how the volume is changing with respect to time. And the way that the volume is changing with respect to time is it is increasing. So it's positive 20. That is telling you that the volume is changing at 20 centimetres cubed per second. So there's a bit of a clue there that the units volume is centimetres cubed per second. And that's that line. It's a bit like this line that we've got here. OK, so dV by dt is equal to 20. If it was emptying at 20 centimetres cubed per second, if it was not being filled up, if it was emptying, it would be that dV by dt is equal to minus 20. OK, so this time we have got here um, a population of rabbits increases by a rate of 300 rabbits per month. Oh, sorry. Um, so we know it's going to be a rate kind of thing because we've got rate. So it's going to be D something by D something else. And we've got 300 rabbits per month. So I'm probably still going to call this one T for time. And I'm going to give this one a capital R for rabbit. So it's going to be that D, I'm not, not going to give it a capital R. I changed my mind. I'm going to say it's the population of the rabbits instead. I'm going to say the population of rabbits. So I'm going to say that DP DT is equal to 300. And we should probably give some units here. So for the first question, I should have said that T is measured in seconds. And I should have said that the volume is measured in centimetres cubed. So for this one, I'm going to say the population is in number of rabbits. And I should say here that T is measured in months for this one. So we're going to just do this last part that we've got here. It says that the amount of medicine in the patient's bloodstream decreases at a rate of 50 milligrams per hour, 50 milligrams per hour after injection. So we've got milligrams per hour. And I guess we need to just decide what the milligram letter is going to be. We're talking about medicine here. So I might use the letter M. I'm going to just do a little M here. Could do a capital M, whatever you want to do. And because it's per hour, I'm going to do dm by dt. And it says that it's decreasing. So if I want the gradient or the rate of something to be going down, I'm going to put a negative in there. And I'm going to say that it is minus 50. And so I'm going to just do one last thing and say that M is the medicine in the bloodstream in milligrams. And I'm going to say that the T, T is the time and it's being measured in hours. So it's just a little bit of notation here about how we can start using other letters and we can take things that seem like real life stuff and we can start putting them into uh, like derivative notation, basically. And we're going to be using these in some problems that are coming up called optimization problems and modeling.